Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to be looking at the low frequency response of a common collector emitter follower. What do the lead networks look like? So we're going to start with a simple BJT amplifier using a stock standard 2N3904 and a split positive negative power supply. I've used some larger biasing resistors here uh, for reasons we can investigate a little later. But we can do a quick approximation given the sizes of these resistors. The base voltage is going to be pretty close to zero, pretty close to ground. So 7 tenths across the base emitter. That's going to leave about 9.3 volts on the 46K. And that's going to work out to be about 2 tenths of a milliamp. Given that, figure out your R prime E. Right, that's going to be uh, 26 millivolts divided by the 0.2 mils, which will be right around 130 ohms, all right? Now, notice the internal generator impedance I'm using is 5K, and the load we're driving is 600 ohms. If we did a direct connect on these things, we would be losing, you know, 90-ish percent of the signal, right? We'd be getting, you know, a little over 10% of the signal out. So although we're not going to see voltage gain here on the follower, we are going to prevent that terrible loss. Now, we can figure out the exact gain, but before we do that, let's do a DC analysis just to make sure that everything is okay, that our approximations make sense. All right, so right off the bat here, um, if I look at the, the current through the uh, emitter resistor, right? We can see that's a little over 201 microamps, so about 0.2 mils as I approximated. And the associated current, which would be going through the base resistor here, is about 2.6 microamps. Now you divide those two out, 200 plus microamps divided by 2.6, you're going to get a beta of about 77. All right, so a little lower than we would typically expect if we had a higher bias point, you know, if we were operating at a few milliamps but certainly well within the realm of uh, possibility. So the gain of this amplifier, right, the voltage gain is going to be the AC emitter resistance, which in our case will be 600 in parallel with the biasing resistor of 46K. Clearly the 600 is the dominating factor here. That parallel combo will be right around 600 ohms, a little less. Um, and that's gonna be divided by that same resistance plus the R prime E. So you throw in the extra 130-ish ohms, and um, you know we're going to be looking at losing maybe 20, 20, 25 percent of the signal. In other words, about 0.75, something like that. Um, of course, there will also be some input loss. Right, the uh, input impedance on this is going to react against the 5K. So some of the input signal is going to be lost here, although this input impedance is going to be much larger than the 5K. We can do a real quick approximation, which again would be this impedance here, which is going to be, like I said, a little under 600 ohms plus the R prime E. That winds up being in parallel with the 51. So that whole thing, you know, if you think about this, um, you know, plus the R prime E at 130-ish, that Z in base is going to be you know, a little over 50K. And you put those two in parallel, and you're going to be looking at 25, 26, 27K, somewhere in that range. So, you know, we are going to lose a little bit of signal here, um, but not a, not a whole lot, you know, not a ton. All right, so just to put a point on that, right, put a little reminder down here. The emitter current's about 0.2 mils. The R prime E actually works out to 129, and we have a beta of, of around 77. Now to figure out the new stuff. What's the low frequency response of this? Well, as we've seen in preceding videos, that is controlled by these inline capacitors, right? Coupling capacitor on the input, one mic. Coupling capacitor on the output, 470 mic. This reacts, turning to the input, this reacts against um, resistance that we see on either side. So, you know, you're basically doing like a, kind of like a superposition here. You're gonna short out this source, figure out this input impedance, and just see what is what is like the feminine impedance that's surrounding CN. Well, we have off to this left-hand side, we have the generator impedance of 5K. And then looking off to the right-hand side, we have RB in parallel with ZN base. In other words, the ZN of this stage. 
and that will give us the critical frequency using our lovely standard little critical frequency equation, 1 over 2 pi rc. On the output end, it's similar, right? We have our 470 mic capacitor. On the right-hand side, it's 600 ohm load, and then we just have to figure out what's going on on the left-hand side. So here we have a 46K biasing resistor. Again, the power supply will basically short to ground. And then it's just a matter of what's the impedance looking into the emitter. Well, looking into the emitter, you would see the R prime E. And then whatever we have out here in the base, and that's going to be divided by beta. Remember, we have to divide by beta. You know, we're going from the emitter back to the base. It's the exact opposite of when we're sitting in the base looking into the emitter. Everything gets multiplied by beta, right? current out here is beta times smaller, or you can think of the current out here being beta times bigger, you know, whatever your reference point is. So when we're looking from here into the emitter, it's beta times bigger. When we're in the emitter looking back to the base, it's beta times smaller. So we would take this pair, divide that by beta, add it to the R prime E. That would give us the Z out of the emitter. That winds up in parallel with our E, and we can add that in with the 600. So just to make that a little bit more clear, we could make some equivalent circuits. So here's that generator with its 5K, 51K bias. Now, when we figure out the Z in base, as I mentioned, that works out to 55 and a half K. So we're going to take these two, put them in parallel. And as you can see, that's going to be, you know, 26, 27 K. Add that with the 5K. That's going to give you your R. You've got your capacitance at one mic. Figure out your critical frequency. Same thing out here on the output network, right? There was our 600 ohm load and the 46K biasing resistor. Looking back into the emitter, you know, we had that R prime E plus the resistors that were out in the uh, base end, which is actually these, right? Divide that by beta, add that all up. There's your 188, put it in parallel with the 46K, which is still going to give you about 188. Um, add that to the 600 and off you go. All right, so just to make that a little bit more clear, okay, here's our summary. The input, right, we have an, uh, we have an RE of 600 ohms in parallel at 46. That gives us 592. In other words, that's these two in parallel. That's 592. All right, the Z in base, you're going to take that 592, add the R prime E to it, which we found out was 129. Multiply that by the beta 77, you get 55 and a half K. All right, that's this. Put those two in parallel, all right, and then add the R gen, right? Because you just open up the cap and look in. So you go out this way, the voltage source sort of shorts, right, and the equivalent, and then you come back up and you got these two in parallel. So 5K plus this parallel combo, right? 5K plus that parallel combo works out to a little over 31 and a half K. Now you take that, uh, resistance and the one microfarad capacitor that we have, grind that out and you get a little over five hertz for the low frequency break. All right, that's the critical frequency for that input lead network. On the output end, we have a similar sort of situation. So the Z out emitter, looking back into the emitter, we see the R prime E, there's your 129. And then we have the two resistors, the 51K bias and the internal impedance of the generator. Put those in parallel. Divide by beta because it's out in the base. Take that result, add 129 to it, and you get 188 ohms, right? So that's your Z out emitter. Now, put that in parallel with the 46. Add the 600 on this side, same deal, right? You're going to open up the, the C out, look into here, and what do you see? On this side, you see that parallel combo. On this side, you see the 600, right? Pretend you're an electron, dance down through here, come back up. Boom, add them together. I know initially it might look like it's parallel, but it's not. These two are in parallel, but that combo is in series with our load. So we grind that out, we get 787 ohms, take your 470 mic, put that in, bingo, 0.43 hertz. Clearly the input network is the dominant network here. Right? It's the higher one, it's the one that affects mid-band response first. So I would expect this gain, you know, uh, like 70% or something like that of whatever the input is, um, to be falling down at around 5 hertz initially, and then when we get down to about you know, 0.4 hertz, it's going to speed up a bit, okay? So that's what we expect to see, ideally, you know, with, with the model that we're using, okay? So let's go back to our circuit, 
and I am going to lift this up because I just have those numbers over here because we're going to need them. All right. There's was the same values I just had on the other one. And let's go up and do our analysis. So we'll do our little Bodhi plot. I'm going to run from a tenth of a hertz to 100 kilohertz. And let's see what we get. All righty. So our mid-band gain is coming up at about minus 3 dB, which is around what we expected. And we just have to find 3 dB less than this. Okay. So that's going to be around minus 6, right? 6 and a little bit. Oops, a little too far. All right, so that's just about 4.4 hertz that we're getting for that. Okay. All righty. Now let me get rid of that. 4.4 hertz. And we had 5.04. So, you know, we're off by... 0.6 hertz, a little over 10%. Hmm, wonder why that might be. Now, we'll get to that in a sec. I would like to check this network. What's the trick, right? If you remember in the preceding videos, what we did is, because it's just the capacitor that sets the critical frequency along with the resistance, in other words, a single component that doesn't affect the bias or anything like that, doesn't affect the gain, it's easy to just change out the capacitors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this by a factor of 1,000. Now, you go from 470 mics to 470 nano. Nano, nano. What does that do? That takes that output critical frequency and it cranks it up by a factor of 1,000. So instead of 0.43 hertz, it's 0.43 kilohertz. In other words, 430 hertz. Let's rerun the analysis. Budding. All right. Scales are completely different. There's our minus three again. So again, I'm going to look for about minus six net. You know, that will give us a net of about minus three. So we're looking at eh, 430, 400, and, well, depending on exactly where I park this, where are we? 0.018. So, um, yeah, that's pretty close right there. So that's 400 and, well, 442, basically. All right. Okay, versus the um, translated 430. All right, so if we brought that back down to, you know, 470 micro, that coincides rather nicely. Okay. All righty. Now... Bring up this. So we had, like I said, about 4.4 hertz on the input. In other words, when this was when this was dominant, then when we translated, uh, we came up to 442 hertz. So uh, you know we're getting pretty good agreement over here. All right. So what's the deal with this? Well, you know, partly this can be the fact that we are given these rather large resistances, we are ignoring the R prime C. In other words, we are ignoring any internal resistance of the current source in the transistor. Now, that's usually high enough to ignore. It's probably several hundred K ohms, 500 K, you know, a big value, which is easy to ignore when you're talking about a few K ohms for biasing resistors. But when you're talking the sizes that we have, you know, 50-ish um, K, that can have an impact. Don't forget, 500K in parallel with 50K, that's a 10 to 1 ratio. That's going to lower that total resistance by a factor of about 10%. And in fact, that's around what we're looking at um, on our calculation where we ignore our prime C, the internal current, um, current source resistance, and what the SIM is showing us. So that's a possibility. Right? So when you're dealing with these larger values, that is something to keep in the back of your mind. We are using a model, right? And that model is, well, our prime C is big enough to ignore. Maybe, maybe not. But you see these little kinds of errors. Those are things you might want to take a closer look at. All right. Okay, there we go. We'll see you next time.